بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزاء ونعومك برحمتك يا أرحم الروح الحمد لله we have توفيق to continue our study of outlines of transcendent philosophy uh, we have already had uh, two sessions on tashkik uh, I mention only uh, part of uh, the discussion about Tashkik uh, with Sheikh Ubudi uh, because I think for our purpose that is enough and we then discuss about another aspect of transcendent philosophy which is very important and that is the way Mullah Sadra understands the relation between effect and cause and in particular the type of existence of the effect so this is a very important aspect of transcendent philosophy so let us first mention uh, something remaining about Tashki called Wujud uh, and then inshallah we move on to this main discussion for today uh, on page 62 and 63 there are, uh, I think, some points that uh, would be good uh, ending for our discussion previously. He says, according to a tashkik fel wujud, according to the fact that existence is graded, there can be three conclusions. So we can conclude with three points. Number one. In mind, we have differences and distinction between mahiyat, quiddities, in three ways that you know we discussed before: tamam uzat, juz uzat, or with araziyat. Are they two mahiyat? Completely are different. There is nothing they share, like. Ajnasa Aliye or they share part of essence and differ on the other part like uh, for example Ensan and Faras they share Heywaniye but they are different in Fas in different or they are the same but they differ in Araziyat like two human beings which differ on height and weight etc color shape so this is for mind and is uh, about mahiyat number two in the external world we have beings and over there these kind of differences among mahiyat in mind would not apply the only way to explain differences in the external world is Tashkik, not those three. Number three, the relation between one and two. Number three, the differences in the external world which come from Tashkik when they go to mind they become those three differences between mahiyat that's a very good summary of the discussion about tashkik so you cannot take tashkik to mahiyat or bring those three differences among mahiyat to wujud kharaji 
ملا صدرا try to avoid what he thought be mistakes of Sheikh Ishraq and Ibn Sina. Sheikh Ishraq believed in Tashkik in Mahiyat and Ibn Sina somehow brought those three kinds of differences to Wujud but Wujud of Mahiyya Wujud Khas so this is one point that I wanted to add then uh, there is a discussion about the role of Asalatul Wujud in the discussion about Tashkik Naqsh Asalat Wujud Dar Mabhas Tashkik so he says it is indeed Mullah Sadra's idea and emphasis on Asalatul Wujud that paved the way for this discussion about Tashkik Fel Wujud we always you know said you know Bedaya other places Sharh Manzuma here that Asalatul Wujud is the foundation actually the most maybe important or at least I cannot say the most important because also اشتراک uh, معنوی وجود حقیقت واحدی وجود they are all important but one of the most important foundations on which many other things you know can be built is asalatul wujud so he Sheikh Ubudiyat explains in this way he says according to what we discussed in the previous uh, chapter previous philosophers had the idea that when the cause grants existence mahiyya really becomes mawjud mahiyat haqiqatan mawjud mi shavad mahiyat really becomes existent so after ja'l after granting existence then mahiyya is the same waqiyat khariji the same external reality and not the mental image of external reality and this is wrong because mahiyya always remains mahiyya before wujud after wujud mahiyya is in mind not in the external world so based on that mistake Sheikh Ishraq attributed tashrik, tashkik which is for waqiyat for external realities to mahiyat and accepted tashkik in mahiyat and masha'un brought those three types of differences and distinctions which are for mahiyat to these uh, external realities because they thought mahiyat mawjuda is these external realities but mullah sadra based on asalatul wujud pr primordiality of existence and etabariyatul mahiyya he says mahiyat are only merely mental images of realities of waqiyat and he tries to keep rulings and mm, discussions about mahiyya and wujud separate not to let them mm, be mixed so tashkik is for waqiyat in kharaj realities in the external world and those three are for mahiyat in zehn in mind i thought this is important point to add uh, there is one point I am not sure to, whether to mention or not because I don't want to confuse anyone but let me say something if you uh, inshallah are familiar or understand it now alhamdulillah otherwise don't worry you know we have two types of hamla so we have hamla avvaliya zati and we have hamla shayi sanai Mullah Sadra also introduces a different types of Haml so based on his idea that we don't want to discuss now 
he believes that a higher being has the perfections which exist in a lower being and therefore you can put this into a kind of a statement for example Zaid is a human being Zaidun and Sanun okay Zaid is a human being Aql Avval the first intellect which is you know the first thing issued uh, from God and by God has also perfections of Ensan and more so we can say Zaydun Ensanun we can say also Al Aqlul Awwal Ensanun but when you say Zayd Ensanun you mean Zayd has perfection that are in human beings and lacks other things so Zayd is not uh, another type of being Zayd is not uh, uh, Faras or Bakar or angel etc Zayd is Ensan so this is had for Zayd Zayd is nothing more or less it's just you know just this of course um, sometimes maybe it's uh, not had the time you may mention just gens or fast but basically we want to say this much is what is as no or gens or fast but when we say al aqlul awwal insanun we don't want to say aql awwal is insan and nothing more we want to say that aql awwal has everything that is in insan and more so a higher being which means a being in the higher degrees and ranks of this ladder of existence can be also put in a haml and he calls this type of consideration haml haqiqa wa raqiqa so sometimes the difference is intensity of reality so insan and much more insan compared to aqla awwal is very little is very light version of that very light version but not example or instance okay this was uh, something i wanted to say uh, just in bracket uh, now we move on to the discussion about wujud rabit ma'lul chapter 5 of the book and that is about the type of existence of ma'lul according to mulla sadra shaykh ubudiyat has a very important uh, introduction here to clarify many misunderstandings about this he gives a list of false understandings and impressions about this discussion when I counted it seems that there are nine types of misconceptions that we need to avoid it is true that Mullah Sadra puts effect very close to the cause but we should not make it mis you know we make this uh, uh, mistake that it's one of these nine so let me list those misconceptions so that right from the beginning you clarify uh, and um, make it clear for yourself number one to deny free will of those which have free will so when we say effect is so much dependent which is like just dependence and just you know, like link and belonging to the cause it doesn't mean that if the effect is mukhtar has free will we are denying that because so much dependent that it has no free will no 
it has it can have free will if it is mukhtar it has free will so we are not denying that so that remains in its place number two we are not denying creatures or contingent beings so we are not saying only wajibul wujud exists and the rest don't exist this is also not what we mean number three which is similar to them to say that everything is wajibul wujud there is a kind of pantheism that everything is God or everything is wajibul wujud no number four we don't say that mumkinat contingent beings are just abstracted from existence of wajibul wujud so that they are the same as wajibul wujud or part of wajibul wujud no neither they are the same as wajib nor they are part of wajibul as we said also it's not that they are not existing also we don't mean that wajibul wujud has gone inside and you know inhabited inside mumkinat like hulul like in a kind of you know um, carnation no or to say that wajibul wujud is like a spirit and mumkinat are like body the distinction we have between body and spirit or body and soul is not applicable to the relation between effects and the cause which is Allah ultimate cause Allah or to say wajibul wujud is the whole world not everything is God but the whole world together is wajibul wujud or to say wajibul wujud bizat is abstracted from contingent beings so any of these things these nine ideas or positions or claims has nothing to do with mullah sadra's idea about um, existence of ma'lul so you have to be very careful and don't get confused now in order to explain this discussion we need to remind ourselves of three types of beings uh, if you remember when we studied for example bidaya or you know other books especially according to allama taba taba's terminology you know, remember we had wujud fi nafse, wujud fi ghayre, and then fi nafse was le nafse o le ghayre. And fi nafse, le nafse can be uh, independent or dependent. So wajibul wujud is fi nafse, le nafse, be nafse. Yeah. Others are بغيره. All of them are بغيره. Whether they are fi nafse, le nafse, or fi nafse, le غيره, they are all بغيره. We had this discussion, but I just start from beginning. Some beings are they are mustaqil mustaqil it means that so there is uh, listen according to the way Sheikh Abu Diyad is explaining and it's a slightly different from what we had in Bedaya so one type of being is mustaqil independent he says what we mean by mustaqil or independent is that has no dependence at all 
has no dependence at all, no condition, nothing. By itself exists. You don't need to consider anything else to say that there must be this, you know, muqtazi, this uh, uh, shart or manem, you know, should not be there. You know, certain conditions to be there, certain obstacles not to be there. Uh, you know, I say things in uh, Arabic, also in English, because uh, sometimes people uh, who watch lectures, you know, uh, request me to say the Arabic, and some people even say English, so I try to say all of them. So, uh, this is for wajibul wujud. Wajibul wujud bizzat. When we say wajibul wujud and we don't say anything, we mean wajibul wujud bizzat. Yeah, it's clear. Because every ma'lul becomes wajibul wujud bilghayr for existence, but we need to mention bilghayr. If you don't say anything, well, whenever I say wajibul wujud alone, you know that I mean wajibul wujud bizzat. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wajibul wujud bizzat is totally mustaqil, independent. Okay, number one. In Allah Metabatabai's discussion, uh, we, as, we used to start with istiqlal bil mafhumiyya first. You are saying that sometimes uh, wujud is used as mafhum ismi, something that can be understood by itself, and sometimes it is harfi. But here he starts like this, no problem. So, first, wujud mustaqil. Second, Wujud Rabati and third is Wujud Rabat. Wujud Rabati means that at the same time that it is uh, Wujud for itself, a being for itself, but it is Lighayrahi, it exists for something else. And you cannot separate between these two aspects. It's not that there are two beings. One being that at the same time that exists is for something else. Like color. Color cannot exist for itself. It exists for substance. There must be a substance which has this color. And the existence of color is different from existence of substance. Yeah, if you have a wall which is white, for example, the existence of wall is different from existence of white. But the thing is that this white cannot exist without being for wall. So, it's finafse means that. It's really a being, and you can understand it s separate from world, but it's l'ghayre. Fi nafse l'ghayre. So there are two aspects. And again, I repeat, it doesn't mean that there are two beings. It's just one being, but this one being has these two characteristics. It's fi nafse and l'ghayre. Then, I think one of the brothers by mistake uh, made me leave. It was giving the name of brother who was a mistake. But hopefully it was a mistake. <laughs> so, we have two types of being. One, so far. We, we have not yet talked about the third one. What is independent? Fi nafse, you can say fi nafse, le nafse. What is independent in understanding? It's a separate being, but it exists for another being, like Kal. And Mullah Sadra says this is fi nafse le ghayre. This is wujud rabati. And 
as I said, it doesn't mean that there are two types of being. It's just one being what with this kind of two characteristics. به بیان صدر المتعلهین وجود فی نفس آن اینن همان وجود لغیره آن است نه مغایره so the same being which is فی نفسه is لغیره is not separate therefore this is why you cannot transfer a'raz from their substance to another substance if it had two types of being one for itself one for the other so you can say okay I can take this and put it on another substance but these two are not separable from each other he says این واقعیت به نحوی است که در ذهن به صورت ذات دارای وابستگی و قیام و ربط یا شیء وابسته و قائم و مرتبط منعکس می شود these type of beings in our mind they are thought they are conceived as an essence even if it is Araz, Araz is essence, you know, because Johar and Araz, they are all Mahiyan, they have essence. So it's an essence which has dependence, which has connection, link. Or you can say something which is independent depends on some uh, sorry something which is not independent is dependent and depends on something else why we emphasize on essence and shay to understand the difference with the next one because the next one even doesn't have essence according to mullah sadra there is no wujud fi nafsa so this is why we are emphasizing on this the third type is wujud rabit the second was rabiti with ya and nisbat the third one is wujud rabit wujud rabit is not fi nafs it has no essence it has no kind of uh, independence presence even uh, you know in our thought in our you know understanding we cannot understand it separately wujud I'm not talking about mahiyah it has mahiyah yeah, mahiyah is when you look at it as this independent thing but it, wujud rabit cannot be thought separately it's not even like aras which are wujud rabiti waqiyat is ke jambe fi nafseh nadarat و فقط لغیره هست وجود رابطی had two sides two dimensions فی نفسه and لغیره this one is only لغیره there is no فی نفسه in itself is not uh, conceivable they say وجود رابط چیزی نیست جز همان ربط is nothing other than ربط belonging وابستگی dependence قیام it's dependent on the cause صدور it's issued from the cause حلول it's present inside the cause etc he says according to philosophers even I mean philosophers before Mullah Sadra Mullah Sadra adds ma'lul also to this but according to Hukama before Mullah Sadra 
معانی حرفی the meanings for prepositions حرف here means prepositions not letters معانی حرفی are like this من للابتدا but the meaning of men is not ابتدا ابتدا is اسم is a noun من is that particular case of ابتدا that exists in for example سرتو من البصرة إلى الكوف it's very particular and relies on sides like سير and you know who is doing this سير and journey etc the, the verb the object Allah Metabatabai Rahmatullah Alai uses the term Wujud uh, fi qayre for this kind of things because there is no fi nafsa, it means it cannot be understood by itself. So, Mullah Sadra says. If we want to understand the existence of ma'lul effect, we should not think ma'lul is rabiti, as you know, previous philosophers have thought that is mustaqil, but exists for its cause. Ma'lul is rabit, not rabiti. It's like ma'nai harfi. Hakim Sabzawari Rizwanullah Ta'ala Alay has something very interesting that it comes later, uh, but I like to mention it here. Uh, he says that, um, inshallah, I can uh, find it, but uh, I can say it uh, uh, myself now, and then inshallah, if I find, I give you the reference. Hakim Sabzawari has a beautiful comparison or analogy. He says, when we understand the relation between effect and cause through Elm Huzuri, which we will talk inshallah later. It's similar to the relation between ma'na al-harfi and ma'na al-ismi. Ma'na al-harfi and ma'na al-ismi. It's very similar, but uh, inshallah we will talk about it later. So Mullah Sadr says we need to revisit the relation between uh, effect and cause, and instead of thinking that it is uh, relation between two things which have wujud fi nafse we should think that ma'lul has no wujud fi nafse ma'lul exists for the cause it's like aras even more than aras or in Allah Taba terminology fi ghayre so he says according to previous philosophers qiyama araz be jawhar hululist white and wool uh, white is araz wool is substance white is halun fil jadar is is present but inside wall inside being the of the wall means is embodied in wall it's uh, incarnate in the wall for them ma'lul is also the same just instead of saying hulul they say sudur previous philosophers they say ma'lul is also wujud rabiti but it has qiyam suduri means it's issued from and by the cause, not halun. It's not like Araz and Johar. But Mullah Sadra is not satisfied with this. 
He says, هر معلولی نسبت به علت فائلی خیش وجود رابط دارد نه رابطی این اسوار والیوم 1 page 330 and of course many other pages he says this so معلول اساسا فاقد جنبه فی نفسه است is totally empty from being in itself for itself is not there in itself also is not there means there is no istiqlal at all cheesy needs just how on his yet is for something else is for something other than itself which is the cause واقعیت معلول جز همان صدور از غیر نیست the reality of the effect is nothing other than being issued from the cause please look at these three sets of uh, sentences statements to understand the difference between previous philosophers and mullah sadr so i'm going to read three sets of statements one by one like a three pairs for example mullah sadra says ma'lul wabastagi wa qiyam bi illat ast previous philosophers used to say ma'lul wabaste bi illat ast not wabastagi قائم به علت است نات قیام you understand the difference so mullah sadra says ma'lur is dependence reliance they said ma'lur is dependent reliant you see the difference when you say it's dependent means it's somehow at least in our understanding independent ملا صدرا سیز معلول ربط به علت است others used to say مرتبط با علت است there's a difference between ربط and مرتبط ربط means connection مرتبط means connected ملا صدرا doesn't say معلول is just connected says معلول is connection with the cause ملا صدرا سیز معلول صدور از علت است others used to say صادر از علت است صدور is different from صادر صدور means issuance صادر means issued if you like we can add a fourth pair also معلول ایجاد علت است معلول ایجاد علت است according to other philosophers موجود به ایجاد علت است according to Mullah Sadra معلول is ایجاد bringing to existence origination according to previous ones exists because of origination of the cause so قیام opposite to qaim sudur opposite to sadir i don't know ijad opposite to mawjud rapt opposite to murtabit wabastagi opposite to wabaste so this i think inshallah clarifies he says even when we say that ma'lul is wabastagi or irtibat or ijad or qiyam or sudur there is a kind of compromise here because something has to be independently present in your mind so can you make and make these you know judgments and these uh, statements even this is a compromise 
look at this statement it's a very mm, very powerful statement ma'lul bima huwa huwa wa an chenan ke hast bi nahw mustaqil na qabil tasawwur ast na hukm pazir if you want to understand the effect in itself or as such is something that cannot be even conceived and would not accept any judgment it's like when you say for example men lil ibtida ba li sababiyya so you have made men or ba mubtada mubtada has to be understood is mustaqil he say okay now this is not really men this is not really ba this is the noun which represents that preposition otherwise preposition we cannot even say mm, is al ibtida because cannot be become mubtada so you understand so when we say ma'lul is wabastagi or irtibat this is a noun which we are using to refer to the cases of ma'lul in other words is ma'lul bil haml al awwali not ma'lul bil haml al shay so ma'lul cannot be understood independently through ilm husuli through conceptual knowledge but if you have ilm huzuri knowledge by presence then you can understand ma'lul and illa of ma'lul because ma'lul is dependent okay so as soon as you can understand ma'lul by ilm huzuri you understand the illa but how much of illa you understand i have said this uh, several times you know in discussions before in um aqaid etc you shouldn't think that you can understand illa perfectly you understand illa as much as this illa is present or is connected with this ma'lul and if that illa itself is also ma'lul you would see the cause of that illa even at the end you can see the ultimate cause which is independent because there is no way to understand something dependent without understanding what is independent and keeping this so ilm huzuri knowledge by presence of ma'lul involves please listen very carefully knowledge by presence of ma'lul involves knowledge about its uncaused cause directly or indirectly with wasate or without wasate it's something to be in between or not being with just directly and this is very good for those people who want to have knowledge by presence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they can have it through ilm huzuri about themselves or if they can have ilm huzuri of other things as well but certainly ilm huzuri of our own nafs help us to understand the cause of our nafs Sheikh Ubudiyat uh, puts uh, this um, 
ideas, uh, some of these ideas in this way. He says, معلول چون فاقد جنبه فی نفس است و فقط همان جنبه لغیره و ربط محض است معلول because lacks استقلال therefore درک حقیقت آن به نحو مستقل از طریق علم حضوری ممکن نیست you cannot understand it independently even through علم حضوری علم حضوری we said we cannot even علم حضوری you cannot understand it independently بلکه یافتن حقیقت ربط همان و شهود شیعی که مربوطون علیه ربط است نیست همان rather as soon as you understand معلول through intuition or knowledge by presence you understand that this is connection this is belonging to something else so you understand that link you understand that connection But there is a limit. How much you can see the cause? As much as this ma'lul can help you. Not everything about that cause. So he says شهود هر معلولی با علم حضوری اینن همان شهود علت آن است در مرتبه آن witnessing the effect through knowledge by presence is exactly witnessing its cause but witnessing the cause in the level of ma'lul only this much not everything be gofte haj mullah hadi sabzewari this was what i mentioned and i said it will come later so this is a comment of hakim sabzewari mullah hadi sabzewari rizwanullah ta'ala lay on as far uh, volume 6 of Aswar uh, on page 221 and 270 he has made this uh, analogy knowledge by presence of the reality of the effect in the light of the cause شبیه درک حصولی معنای حرفی در پرتوی معنای اسمی است if you want to give an example that is similar to that علم حضوری but in علم حصولی we can say in علم حصولی when you understand معنای حرفی in the light of معنای اسمی when you understand the meaning of propositions in the light of nouns you understand the meaning of men in the light of al ibtida or fi in the light of zarfiya or ba in the light of sababiya it's similar we're not saying it's, you know 100% similar because there are also differences because the cause may have other aspects may have other creatures but uh, ibtida is only ibtida ibtida doesn't have something more than what men is explaining it's just a title for that if that cause is itself ma'lul of another cause a higher cause then the higher cause also will be reflected till we reach something which is independent so we can say درك حضوري هر معلولي در حقیقت شهود وجود مستقل است در مرتبه آن معلول بی واسطه یا واسطه 
So whenever you have knowledge by presence of any ma'lul, indeed you are understanding that top cause which is independent, but through this ma'lul. You understand that one either with something in between, like there are other causes in between, or this is the thing which is directly under that ultimate cause, Sadr Abbal. So there is nothing in between. Shayad maqsood urafa az tajalli haq dar makhluqatash hamin bashad. Maybe. Of course, urafa, uh, maybe they mean more than this, but he says maybe what they mean by manifestation, maybe it's this. That whenever you can have knowledge by presence of any ma'lul, you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is independent. But through this gate, not everything about him. Mullah Sadra uses the expression tajalli, manifestation, or tasha'un. Tasha'un comes from sha'an. Sha'an, sha'un. Sha'an means uh, if you want to translate, maybe you can say uh, sometimes shan means condition, sometimes shan means uh, property, characteristic. Uh, so there are different ways to understand or interpret shan. But tasha'un means that vajibul wujud is now somehow being specified and limited in this ma'lul. Wajibul wujud is absolute. I cannot understand absolute. But wajibul wujud manifests itself or comes down, 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 down so that in something specific Something which is muqayyad, not mutlaq, is not absolute, I can connect. It's tasha on. So the theory of Mullah Sadra or opinion of Mullah Sadra is known as Nazariye Tasha on. So, conclusion. As a summary, we can say in conclusion this. حقیقت معلول به ماهیه هیه به نحو مستقل نه با علم حصولی قابل درک است نه با علم حضوری The reality of معلول In so far as it is معلول So معلول as such It's reality cannot be understood independently, whether through conceptual knowledge or knowledge by presence. بلکه در هر نوع ادراکی in both types of ادراک حصولی and حضوری فقط در پرتو ادراک وجود فی نفسه علتش درک شدنی و حکم پذیر است. You can understand and judge about it only in the light of understanding its cause. Yani ma'lul faqat agar be manzale sha'ni as sha'un illat malhuz bashad. If we consider it just as a kind of a specific condition or a kind of an affair of or a matter related to the cause. Not something independent. You can understand and you can make judgment about it. Daray hok wa muttasif be vas mishe, and you can describe it. So, for judging, describing, even conceiving, you need to start with the cause and say the cause is now in this thing understandable. Okay, so Alhamdulillah, we uh, completed this discussion about Wujud al-Rabit, chapter 5. Inshallah, in the next uh, session, we have a very 
delicate discussion about haraka, about motion. This is very important for all philosophers. This is one of the things that uh, Ayatollah Mutahari, when he was commenting on usul falsafe wa ravish ra'alis, discussion about quvu fil and haraka, he uh, had to wait and invited Allah Tabatabai to his house in Tehran uh, so that he could serve him and also discusses these things and then makes comments because very complicated and he wanted to make sure that he understands his teacher properly and can you know discuss with him so for all philosophers this is very important especially for Mullah Sadra because he has Harakat Juwari substantial motion and also the impact that this discussion has about time Harakat and Zaman are normally discussed together because Zaman is the quantity for Haraka for motion inshallah chapter 6 will be about Haraka chapter 7 would be about substantial motion about Harakat Johari we will try inshallah to mention the main important points uh, because we want to inshallah cover all the things about uh, transcendent philosophy Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Is there any question, comment? I hope inshallah after months of May Allah bless you inshallah Thank you very much Inshallah after months of Ramadan I hope uh, we can utilize uh, the second slot of the time because we have 5 to 7 so we should inshallah have at least 90 minutes but uh, inshallah after months of Ramadan maybe we can have two sessions with a break or an ex long extended session inshallah we will see uh, please remember us your du'as in these remaining days and nights and pray for all the brothers and sisters in this group inshallah jazakumullah khairan may Allah grant your hajat Thank you very much. Thank you very much.